r slash credit. Sap Fomalan says. Do you believe in aliens? Why or why not? Sister underscore Iris says. Absolutely. The universe is huge, whether they're in our galaxy or not who's to say, but the odds of life evolving only on Earth seems astronomically low. People have discovered planets somewhat similar to Earth in terms of distance from their star slash presence of water. Twisted Blister says. If you're asking if there is intelligent life on other planets, I'm sure there is. If you're asking if little green men in flying saucers are buzzing around Earth, the answer is no. Snip Paintings 5660 says. 100% there are aliens, in fact I believe that it's impossible for there not to be aliens there. Chance that Earth would be the only planet with life is incomprehensibly low. Hpskfukeshk says. 100 billion to 400 billion stars in our galaxy, depending on which source you use. 100 billion planets in our galaxy, 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe, around 5% of the universe. Is observable, organic molecules on Mars, the oceans prove we barely know anything about extremophile life assuming our galaxy is an average galaxy, a big assumption, that's 4, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, the odds of us being alone in the universe are nil. Jittery Skirrell says. The real question is, do they believe in you? Fmefndu says. I believe in aliens, yes. I feel it's arrogant to believe we are the only intelligent beings in this humongous universe. Do I think they'll ever come here? No. I think they are on their planet questioning if they are alone or not in the universe. Supervalent says. Yes, I believe in aliens. I do not believe they've ever been to Earth, or that they ever will come to Earth, nor will we ever be able to confirm the existence of intelligent extraterrestrial life. I believe both slash all of these things with every ounce of my being for the exact same reason, the universe is incomprehensibly vast, the time scales unfathomably long, and speeds involved unimaginably fast. The probability of there being no other intelligent life is as unlikely as us ever making contact with another intelligent species. We might detect slash find alien microbes at some point. Edit, and FTL travel is a cute idea. Searc says. I believe every possibility is a reality. Synachglick says. I'm a geologist. I strongly believe the universe contains other life forms. Whether life is intelligent? Who knows? It took the right things happening in just the right order for intelligent life to evolve here. We are lucky our solar system just happens to be located in the sticks of the Milky Way, it hasn't always been, and won't always be, located here. While we may come to find the universe is teeming with life, I'll be very surprised if the majority of that life is intelligent. The universe is dangerous. Even our very planet is dangerous, just given its mass extinction history. And it took us 4.5 billion years to get this far. The universe is only 13.7 billion years old. The first stars didn't even form until we were 400 million years into those billions, WMAP project. And it took insanely more millions before they were pumping out new element, like carbon. The best model we have to use here is ourselves. If we took that long, all we can do, is assume it will take slash has take another life just as long. Our current understanding of the physics of the universe also means we are unlikely to ever interact with other life. Maybe if we sort out quantum entanglement and teleportation, or if we find new physics, those odds go up. But even then, it could be like searching for a needle in a haystack. The universe is unfathomably big, and we are decidedly not a biologically resilient species when it comes to space travel. But when I meditate and go deep, I'm absolutely certain we are not alone, we just don't understand the true nature of reality yet. 
Still, that's not repeatable reproducible evidence. That's just faith. Uncomfortable Bike 975 says. In the entire vastness of this universe. Absolutely. Do I believe they built the pyramids? Not so much. R slash as credit. Thickhog47 says. You are dying. What are the best final words? Tisputelli says. I have 80 million point dollars buried in. 8 separate point barrels therebra. Dummy boy underscore says. Good game boys. I gotta go though. Play again tomorrow? Last logged on 55 years ago. Secret underscore agent underscore Hank says. My only regret. Is that I have bonitis. Kieran May says. A famous comedian died the other day. People usually know him from Law and Order, but he's was a comedian. His last words were, Frick, you you mother, Frick, er and died. He was very witty slash sarcastic. The underscore frost with a says. Live long and prosper. Zicho says. Last one to die is gay. Or will was right 101 says. Either that wallpaper goes or I do. Final words of Oscar Wilde. Rockamish says. Yahtzee. Jim Abaddon says. Frick I'm finally. Hopeless underscore trader says. You're next. Fresh Avocado 78 says. I'm Jewish, so the Shima. DS101123 says. And the antidote to the poison you drank is in. It'll forget later anyway says. I blame you. Your friend says. Rosebud. JmaxLVL says. I finally know the meaning of life, it dies. Adele021578 says. Your real father is D. Completely dead. Din underscore car says. Finally. My day has come. Olivrissa says. Technoblade never dies. Daquan 786 says. Tell my wife I said hello. Dvnan says. At least I lost my virginity. Tech Junkie 75 says. Is it in yet? Ice Mail Salik says. La Rada Harai La Rala, Muhammad Arajalala. Sunfixn underscore says. Sucker mum. Flitchworthy says. The only person who knows the truth is. Picabaka says. Knock knock. Interesting bet 2330 says. It's okay to let go. Funny Shrimp Boy says. In case the one to pass wants to be cremated on your marks, get set, bake. Nima Zivota Bezdinama says. I did all the things I did in my life. I was aware of the things I wanted but didn't do. Still it was my choice and responsibility. So all in all, I will be able to leave this earth in a good mood. R slash us credit. Complex structure 178 says. Pet owners of Reddit, do you give your pet a voice, and how would you describe it? Mother of Borzois says. Gilbert Gottfried. Older that 515 says. When I was a kid, somehow I gave the family cat a voice, where he said the letter resish. This became the default accent for all cats during my childhood. I don't really think of my present cat as having a voice beyond her own, I guess I've lost some of the magic of childhood. Select Anxiety 1557 says. Sometimes they sound like cute little children and other times they sound like Cartman. Rootentootentoo Gunshootin says. For some reason he's an old prim, proper, derby wearing, old dude that's lazy. Big block headed American bully, R walks. His voice, it appears that I have grown weary in my travels, and do not wish to proceed any further. We shall rest here.
You shall make us camp. Complex Structure 178 says. I give my cat the most high pitch voice I can ever make, and a add a lisp to it. Rolls G says. Hades from the Disney movie. Canon Cult Buster says. High pitched very southern gentleman. Smashing underscore Calabasita says. Absolutely. My ex had three dogs and none of them had a voice and it seemed sat. My dog's voices, as if every letter has a soft sound, and all S's. RZ's. Robin Bird 27 says. They have little baby voices because they are my babies. Bush to Cap Penguin says. To cats, big and small, so clearly their voices are Cartman and Butters. Fantastic underscore mail 804 says. I have a coon hound who is way too fond of his own voice for me to make another one up. I underscore am underscore the underscore grapevine says. No. I'm more like the kid in the sixth sense, I hear dogs voices. I've described and translated, and my friends and family's dogs personalities and voices through my gift slash curse. Gift because it's great to tell people the wonderful things their dogs are saying slash feeling. Curse because there are never enough treats. Never. Candrex says. Kinda goofy. Diddle zero ckx2 says. No. I'll speak to my dog in funny voices, but I've never imagined them having a voice. Because they don't. Lemjin says. I sometimes voice what I think are their thoughts out loud. But only for one specific thought do I have a voice in mind. That lady from the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie when she says, somebody's touching me, when my cats aren't in the mood for a pet. Ms. Wimsey says. A high-pitched gangster. Now see here. Whatever that voice is. R slash us credit. Worried underscore trailer says. What is the key to happiness in life? Green T11 says. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of their women. Devi J0 Northeast says. Free time. Nuka Bro 762 says. Tuna melts cold water a chair in the middle of the woods as the sun falls you light the thickest blunt you can. Corner Moon says. Low expectations. Kami Berzato says. It's obviously relative to the individual, but for me, it's purpose usually in some form of self-achievement or community. No Tomato 7790 says. Being content with oneself. Jupiter Reanites says. It is different for different people, but for me, I would say a life purpose and goals. You are all softer says. Frick others opinions, if you aren't breaking any laws, then who cares? Do you? H0use underscore pet says. Controlled hedonism. Hear me out here, humans are one of the few species in the world that do things purely for pleasure, we crave it. I'm not saying we should give in to every indulgence or let go of our darker impulses, that should be under control. But when we deny ourselves pleasures, even the simplest ones, because we are told we should we should, or that enjoying them makes us lazy or wrong we sacrifice not only our own happiness but that of the people around us. It's a good thing. To want to be successful, it's good to want to get ahead in life and build a future, but when we lose our ability to just enjoy the time we are living in now we are giving up far more than we realize. More underscore Ruli says. How do I make a post in general I'm been wanting to use my fkd up vocab lately, but don't know how lol sorry I random picked much respect. 990,912 says. True friends not these BS fake ones you tend to get all the time, but real true friends, that I have your back. I'm my best friend's godfather I was also the officiant at his wedding I would die for that sob, and I know, that that's mutual, because he's proved it to me. I kinda lolled says. Unholy amounts of money, to insulate yourself from a crumbling world. Jen underscore Jelfling says. 
accept the unacceptable. Red Battery says. Happiness is pretty simple. Someone to love. Something to do. Something to look forward to. Ritami Brown. Watermelon Nito says. Also, figure out what you want and live in alignment with that. Watermelon Nito says. Not give a FCK about the big things and enjoy the small things. 3003 says. Serious answer, friends, family, good relationships. So lovely says. Mental, physical, and spiritual health, relationships, and acceptance. R slash as credit. Jason XP2000 says. What is something guaranteed to make a kid a target of bullying? Stump Dog says. Having an easily rhymable name. Teak underscore on skill says. Smelling like this. Bob Towney says. Being fat. Two nuts one bag says. Bad hygiene. Not having a sense of humor. Being too uptight. Trying too hard to fit in. Cassited underscore momentum says. Being a ginger. Lower letter 8573 says. Having learning disabilities. Shadorida 1509 says. A bowl cut from mom. Yadfree says. Anything. Bullies aren't picky. Mambo Circus says. External signs of poverty or insecurities disabilities. Shaikya Noichi 94 says. Having a yee yee ass haircut. No underscore total underscore 487 says. Sadly, black kid at white school or white kid at black school. Hispanics in the same scenario are a hit or miss with this. Kim Dan 533 says. A lack of confidence. Bullies pick on people who won't fight back, so the kid who is shy and doesn't have a ton of friends is a prime target. At least, that was my story growing up. Dick Picks in Mine Barksple says. Intentionally making their kids dress differently. Like yeah, don't give them free reign, but I've seen kids get bullied because their parents make them dress a certain way. It was very bad for teens in the early 2000s who looked like they were getting ready for 8 to 0 glamour shots. Tell Americorp Stop Gun says. These days kids get bullied for having androids over iPhone. I like Rubik's Cube says. Bullies. Felicia Fancy Bottom says. Everything, and this isn't meant to be negative I just believe that everyone gets bullied, made fun of, razzed, etc. For at least something. It's the severity that changes, and how you react. Obviously there are things that make you an easier target, but if you were asking in a way to prevent bullying for someone, I'd say it's more effective to teach someone how to handle bullying, and what it really means slash why it's being done. Bonja Laskett says. Having abusive parents. Dog Poop Yum Yum says. Short or a teenager with a receding hairline. Eve Six says. Having some weird ass name like ABCD shithead pronounced shithead la pronounced ladder shachad laurel. Ritting to Clife says. It can literally be anything. Any perceived difference or weakness. Fair Union 275 says. Being named Chauncey. Odd underscore adhesiveness 4804 says. A bookworm. Danish underscore Cameron says. Low confidence. Light the end says. Wearing a fedora. Cockroach Remarkable 7 says. Having parents slash family members who smoke. Kids are mean man. Steph7 says. Wearing dinosaur pajamas. Guap5 Tear says. Too short or too tall. Too many sclerosis says. Being a know-it-all. Well, actually. R slash as credit. Fortunate Ranger says. What's the funniest conspiracy theory you've heard? 
a counter of Monte Cristo says. In this order. 1. Birds are drones and Sigon telephone wires, to charge their batteries too. Antarctica is a wall of ice holding in the oceans of our flat Disca 3. Plateaus are the stumps of giant trees that were chopped down years ago with very advanced machines for Jewish space lasers. Anonymous Matu says. The entire flat earth thing. Who is profiting off this grand scheme? Aquarius 3500 says. That covid vaccines contain alien DNA, or, hold on, small octopuses. Scary Coast 793 says. That Lady Gaga is actually John Bennett Ramsey. Craig Helmick says. Trump is leading a fight against the pedophiles. Dark Ninja Penguin says. Ever seen Liam Neeson and seen Penn in the same place at the same time? Didn't think so. Kiska says. More than 10 years ago I've read an article about a German Nazi forum, doesn't exist anymore. I was a lefty political science student, and decided to troll those people. I think there were about 5 left leaning people on that forum and the rest were somewhere on the right spectrum. Some were just right leaning populists, other were full blown Nazis. One guy in particular was unhinged. You know you went too far, when your fellow Nazis are laughing about you. This guy came up with my favorite conspiracy theory to date. He was of the opinion, that Jewish men introduced proper, purebred German women to oral sex, thus making them entitled, and not content anymore with just being rammed by a proper German cock. Imagine telling on yourself like that. How bad in bed, must you be, that you pin, even that on the Jews. I still wonder sometimes what that guy is doing now. Arkady2009 says. Windmills cause cancer. Fan underscore sufficient says. I believe that there is people living Sweden called serve. Eek555 says. Nazis on the moon. IVTD4KDS says. A fairly recent one, but that the show Blockbuster on Netflix was intentionally made to be awful, so that Netflix could end Blockbuster again, and relive their glory years. Dustafaxman says. Flat earthers and the belief, that the continent of Australia doesn't exist, it's part of the round world conspiracy. The funny bit of it is, that the flat earth society will still ship merchandise there according to the shop on their website. Back to Batch says. The little dog didn't actually laugh, when he saw the cow jump over the moon, he howled, thinking it was a sign from aliens. Time Key says. I had a cow walker who believed that there was no such thing as potato plants, and that potatoes were just cancerous tumors harvested from other plants, and eating them gave you cancer. Kiraingan78 says. That wearing red shoes means you're a satanic pedo that drinks children's blood for youth lol, had. An actual person tell me this. Listen, Linda honey, my. Red shoes are fashionable and a power move, but. Let's talk more about drinking kids blood for youthfulness, like are you sure that works? Me as I'm looking at my new wrinkles, and sagging jawline. Is it cheaper than plastic surgery? r slash as credit significant tour 8749 says do you think it's acceptable to wear pajamas in public why or why not inokao speculation says as long as it covers your genitals wear whatever the frick you want wheel sonal says as long as you are in warmat primal underscore machine underscore 22109 says I couldn't care less, so long as it's legal, and not too obscene nor distracting. But, just like in many settings, someone's decision to wear whatever they want, or do whatever they want, could have unforeseen consequences, regardless of whether those consequences are justified or not, such as a print business owner refusing you service. Edit, correct use of a phrase. Truthfindaro says. Hell yeah who cares. You be you. Outrageous worker 51 says. 
do whatever you want. I drive in pajama sometimes, but I won't go inside anywhere lol. Clutterage Shovel says. If it's an 8 o'clock and college class it's probably fine. If it's Halloween, NBD. Otherwise I'm probably gonna judge. Particularly if there are slippers involved. Doc Wolf one says. Are they showing off any of the four naughty bits? If not then I don't care. I'm not deciding if someone else's comforts is appropriate. Dritton Cog says. I would personally not do it, but I don't feel strongly either way about anyone that does. His naughty vixen 69 says. I think in certain situations, yes. Like going into labor and rushing to the hospital or running out to check your mailbox. Not when you are out shopping or out to dinner though. At least make an effort to look presentable and not like you just practically rolled out of bed. Flipping underscore penguin 19 says. Yes. I think that as long as someone's junk is covered, they can wear whatever they want. Lawless Frog says. I think it looks kinda trashy and lazy, but at the end of the day I'm not staring you down. I just want my diet coke from the Dollar Tree man. Metal Nightwing says. I do think it's acceptable, in a manner of speaking, for an early morning class, late evening errand or quick trip to the grocery store. There's no judgement here, but more power to anyone who goes out to handle business, shopping at the mall, or going to a restaurant in their pajamas. To be fair, though, I've seen people more put together in pajamas than some in regular clothing. Alive underscore wandering says. I'll wear pajama pants and a t-shirt for a quick run to the store down the road on the weekends. But, that is all. Bernus Bluff now says. Taking the trash to the curb, sure. Not at the mall. Zets27 says. As long as all the bits are covered, I don't give a frick. R slash credit. Undercover Agent 010 says. What country would you never travel to, and why? OK Firefighter 1676 says. In Somalia, do. I need to explain why. Thesis Intherapist says. Somalia. When Wikitravel tells you to prepare a will, next of kin, and bodyguards, then it's probably for the best I won't visit there. Breek Time 1 says. Saudi Arabia because I like being stoned, but not getting stoned, if you know what I mean. Realistic underscore practice 16 says. Dubai. Frick that gilded turd. Mazo underscore TGN says. North Korea. No reasons are needed. Belayar Modest says. Florida. Champignon of Merkwall says. Any extremely religious country. Seeds of Essence says. India, population explosion and disease. Government violence to you says. Yemen. Cause it's completely, frick edition. Always Sunny Drag Race says. Somalia. No explaining needed. Low NWD says. Iran. Feasty underscore effect underscore 7487 says. Iraq. Outrageous underscore edge underscore 6552 says. Philippines. Ugly stupid worthless says. Syria. Jaddy 00 says. North Korea, no need to explain. Certified Stupid says. Australia. Period. Googaboy14 says. North Sentinel Island India. Zendermind says. Most of Africa. Patient Wishbone3067 says. Besides Haiti, Liberia, Somalia. Any country under Sharia law, for instance. Dubai, I don't want to go anywhere where foreign laborers are being pressed into slavery or women are punished for being raped. Puzzle Hill aided 442 says. Canada, they measure in metric. Bevshak says. 
Canada. They said no. Dull underscore engineering underscore 583 says. Most from the US no travel list plus the US. Savitinus says. Mexico. Cause even the cops rob you. Kyung Pulliam says. China, as I've heard they don't really like black people. Inklxx says. Any extremely religious or atheist country. Weak Pusser says. Mexico you will never go back home with your head on. Pretty underscore gorgeous says. USA. R slash credit. Cynical homicide 3248 says. Parents of bullies, how did you find out your child was a bully, and how did you deal with it? Permabant007 says. This is a loaded question. Most bullies do so, because they are being bullied at home, and copying the behavior. None of these abusive, frick, SR gonna cop to abusing their kids. And yes, bullying is abuse. Princess Susan says. Some parents have the attitude of my child would never do, that when I was teaching her there were few times the parent of the bully would come in, and complain that their child is the one being bullied. When their kid is the one antagonizing everyone else. Formal Choice 8832 says. Not my kid, but a friend's. Turned out the kid, 16, 17 meters, was bullying a trans student who was new to the school. Making their life absolute hell, sending call to their phone, telling them they'd always be a girl, and that people would r slash pet them, chucking condoms into their locker, throwing Lucas aid over them, basically getting the entire year to hate them. Anyway, things ended up escalating, and the student in question, had some serious issues because of it. My friend was absolutely mortified, and believed it was her fault, even though she's a lovely mother, and has raised her kids to be tolerant and respectful of everyone. We just didn't understand why he'd do something like that. Ended up taking him to a private therapist, taking his phone and box away for at least a year, and seriously ramping up the chores he had to do. My friend was adamant he should still be allowed to go to clubs and see his mates though, since she didn't want him to be isolated. Ironic, huh? I personally think that kid is gay as anything, and was using that student as a punching bag, because of his own identity crisis, his mother, although well meaning, isn't very clued up on LGBT issues, she still calls it the TLGT, but there wasn't a lot I could do except tell him I was there for him, but what he did, wasn't acceptable in any way. Oops I shit it again says. I dug a mine in our backyard, and made him work in it, until he caught the black lung and died. Kind underscore Corgi says. My daughter. Once. Had a friend sleeping over, and I got a phone call from the mother of a boy they had messaged. It really wasn't nice, and she was in the next room. I've told them countless times, that bullying via phone is vile, school tells them. And yet she still did it. Normally the sweetest kid, caught in a moment of peer pressure and showing off. She lost her phone for a month, and we offered a written, or in-person apology which was not wanted. A huge learning lesson. Can someone plus call 911 says. Why is this NSFW that's all I'm here to say. Maleficent underscore scale underscore 296 says. I apologize in advance for this, I'm not in any way condoning spanking or hitting ever. That having been said, the one and only time I've ever spanked, was when my beautiful, precious, adorable little 4 year old girl did a horrible thing to another little girl playing on the beach one day. I still shudder at the whole thing. r slash credit. 254 editor says. What do people living outside Africa imagine it's like to live here? Ego underscore tripped says. They don't know it's Christmas time, until we sing to them. Ocean underscore Sopian says. Most people probably envision the savannah and native tribes, along with images of very poor, malnourished children from those charity ads. Toka Tornet says. Define Africa. 
I imagine Kara is totally different from Johannesburg. Atsunama Kid 01 says. When I was a kid I told my schoolmates in the UK that I lived in a treehouse in the African country I lived in, that almost everyone did, except the really really rich people. They asked a lot of questions about what tree houses were like. Firemaster2311 says. Probably there is a lot. From amazing to horrible. Like any place I guess. Chanderscore Chanderscore Pielus says. Depends on which country in Africa. Spirited underscore confection 7 says. As someone with a South African family bad electricity. Fresh underscore Pamilo 8842 says. Poverty and crime. Just some 70s guy says. I imagine it's 50 plus countries, and living in one of them is not going to be the same as living in another. Lexi underscore Lizza says. Some people may imagine Africa is a place of poverty, war, disease, and famine, based on media coverage of conflicts, natural disasters, and humanitarian crises in certain regions of the continent. Others may think of Africa as a place of wild animals, safaris, and tribal cultures, based on movies, TV shows, and documentaries that romanticize or exoticize African landscapes and traditions. Barcode Ninja says. It must vary from country to country. It's a huge place. Oops I shit it again says. Africa is a massive continent. Some places feature the world's worst conflicts, while others have thriving modern cities. Trick Boom 414 says. Watch clips in Africa from the amazing race. That's pretty much the only way the entire continent of Africa minus maybe Egypt is presented to Americans. Everything is grass huts and lions. No cities. No suburbs. Everything is orange and dusty. Be Just Immortal says. From what I have seen on documentaries and stuff is, that South Africa is pretty much similar to western countries especially Cape Town, as are many other bigger cities all over Africa. Much empty space in the Sahara. Much wildlife. Still have native tribes. Big wealth gaps. Dragonfly says. It probably feels a lot like living in Canada. R slash a scredit. Fleur de Luca 29 says. What's the ugliest city you have ever been to? PM underscore R underscore sweeter puppets says. Gary, Indiana. To Nuki says. Los Angeles. Ian Hajar 81 says. New Orleans. Marlo says. Besides maybe the French Quarter and the Garden District, New Orleans is an absolutely terrible city. Unfairly underscore certain says. Atlanta. Sunder Kalugo Toffee says. New York City, hands down. Trash, filth, crumbling buildings, sewage in the streets. Seriously, they should just abandon it, and let nature take over. Bolin says. Mansfield. Rudia Jones says. Toronto. When it's hot, it smells like poo, and everything feels greasy. Rabia Vulps says. Malta. Entire island. Like holy shit, after our honeymoon me and my wife understand why most people just stay on their cruise ship and never actually explore the damn place. Jimmy Driver says. Newark, New Jersey. Santa Claus underscore says. Baltimore. Exotic underscore Storm 6788 says. Birmingham. Complete Wox says. Doncaster. Mystery underscore Eda 1 says. Memphis. Even the nice parts aren't very nice. The rough parts are, well, rough. Slow Bookkeeper 7486 says. San Antonio was pretty damn ugly. Plaguis the Hedgehog says. Probably Plymouth, England. 
I love the place and visit it regularly, but the area has never been able to regenerate, rather constructing modern buildings next to 60s style disused flats leaving this weird Frankenstein city with a struggling high street. Also despite being on the coast it basically has no beaches. Lost in the Woods 75 says. Oklahoma City. Might underscore be underscore deleted says. Birmingham Alabama. The Garden Blinked says. Rotherham. Yukas, back me up here. JC50000 says. London can get, frick edition. I'm a small town country boy at heart. Back to Batch says. Camden, New Jersey. Vorksford underscore says. Redditch. Just go on Google Maps and you will see why. It's just full of junk everywhere. Bush underscore picks underscore welcome says. Shreveport, Louisiana. Prehistoric Shark says. It was back in 2006, but Managua, Nicaragua, and Tegucigalpa, Honduras, stood out to me as exceptionally ugly cities during my travels through Central America. R slash credit. Heavy bid 8572 says. What actually happens if you are at a restaurant and the tab comes and you can't pay? Do they really make you do dishes? Renota2023 says. Pretty sure they call the police or kick you out without mercy. Regular Bat4449 says. When I was a patrol officer, we got a call for this. Wrote a ticket for theft of service and issued a trespass warning. Never had to go to court for it. Ille Beanstalk says. I was 18 at the time, but my friend and I had this happen to us. It was only about $25 worth of food from Chili's, the server let us go. No repercussions or anything but I felt so bad. We did go back to pay the amount, and give her a huge tip for being so kind. Engineering Virgin says. Depends on the restaurant, if you legit forgot your wallet they might just allow you to go get it and come back. If you don't have the money and we're just trying to dine and dash, you'd probably just get banned from the restaurant and or fined by law depending on the price of what you bought. Foreign Complaint 130 says. When I worked in that industry, we'd take your details, if we didn't already have them from the reservation, and send you an invoice. Same as a plumber might do if unpaid. I don't remember ever having to go further than that, in terms of small claims court etc we wouldn't have wanted you do to dishes. For one thing, KPs are quick and efficient, and know the kitchen layout. Some random are slowing down service, to make up a bill is costing us money two ways. For another, KPS slash dishwashers get paid bugger all. You'd take hours to make up the equivalent of the bill. 3L3M3NT4LP4ND4 says. No, it's an insane violation to let someone work unpaid, and an even bigger violation to let untrained people into a professional kitchen. As someone who's worked at numerous they generally go one of two ways. They hold you there under threat of the police until someone you know can come pay slash get your money for you. Or, and this one might not be as legal, if you can't get a hold of anyone then they'll keep something of yours as insurance, that you'll come back and pay. Realistic Original 4 says. Often they'll calm the bill, if you're acting in good faith. Especially in bigger chains. Not worth the bad press, to charge someone who may have made an honest mistake. That being said, if they suspect you're actively trying to rip them off they will call the cops. A lot of restaurants will accept collateral, while you go get your wallet, your license or phone, while you go get payment. Dogalicious says. I'm sure if it was an honest mistake they'd permit you to make some sort of arrangement, to remunerate them at your earliest convenience. Zerby says. Depends on the restaurant, for the one I worked at, if it was obviously an accident we would take their information and trust they'd come back and pay later, and almost every time they did. If the people acted belligerently then we'd call the police, and have them deal with it, but usually the threat was sufficient. 
for Dine and Dash, the police will be called assuming we got their license plate. My boss was also a chill guy, and if someone was obviously hungry and unable to pay he'd give them a free meal. For regulars, if they were on the wrong end of a paycheck he'd just let them pay when they could afford it later, did this for me more than once. r slash credit. Amora 521 Hey says. What should you say you're weak at when you're trying to pass a job interview? Demand more says. You don't have to answer the question asked, just use it as framework to tell the story you want to tell. In this case, turn the question around, talk about something you were weak at, but are now good at, with some key points about the process of going from weak to strong. I used to be terrible with getting lower priority projects done timely, because I focused exclusively on the highest priority project. But after a few times scrambling to suddenly get a low priority project done on schedule, I learned to set aside an hour each day to turn to the back burner matters to move them along, so they didn't get neglected, and surprisingly found that this approach made the high priority projects move along faster too. Forcing my mind to focus elsewhere for a short time every day increased my ability to stay focused on the bigger things the rest of the day, and suddenly everything was getting done on or ahead of schedule. And have an example or two ready. Heyunjin says. Work-life balance, always focus too much on work. Bloodrose underscore GW2 says. I'm weak at answering stereotype questions on interviews. Slutster C2 says. Remain silent, and pull an index card out of your pocket that says I overprepare. Node Poker says. We don't ask that any longer, but when we did the reason wasn't to find what you were bad at it was to see if you had the ability to self-critique. If someone gave an honest answer we would often follow up with something along the lines of what strategy could be useful to combat that? Or, how can we help you better yourself? I can also honestly say we never didn't hire someone, based on their answer to this, or these, question or questions alone. Feraya says. Interviews. 420. Traveler says. I work too hard, I care too much, and sometimes I can be too invested in my job. Kronkel Donka says. 1. Finding my own weaknesses, it cuts the question short too. Passive slash diplomatic, would rather be a team player than a leader. 3. Lack of experience, young and eager to learn I personally hate saying I have poor work-life balance, because it's either an outright lie, or it rides the edge. I prefer using embellished half-truths. Isacock101010 says. Microsoft Access. PM Mios Maltitz says. Intubating. Batizan says. I guess it depends what you're trying to hide. Stuck in Nov 1999 says. I'm weak at not following directions. No scope the Pope 101 says. Say you you have a bad memory. Then say that you resolve this by diligently taking notes and always having a pen and paper while moving around the office. I've used this response in 3 to 4 interviews, and received good feedback. Roshanna says. I'm a visual person, so if I don't write something down, I won't remember it. I can easily combat this, by taking meticulous notes during every meeting. I'm a project manager, so this weakness is also a strength of my job. Lost underscore causes underscore 4, all says. I guess I'd say my greatest weakness is my inability to take seriously a person asking psychology 101 questions they lifted straight from their copy of job interviewing for dummies. So when do I start? Off of NSF says. Whatever you decide, I advise always structuring the response to indicate that you're trying to get better. Finish on a high note. For illustration, I used to find it more difficult to recognize when I needed support, or to ask for it. I've started stressing teamwork, and talking to my coworkers more. 
I'm discovering that, if you supervise, it's critical to assign tasks to people, based on their strengths, so that we can all contribute to projects and meet deadlines. I've learned that it's crucial to know who to ask questions of when I don't fully comprehend something, or when I know I'll need more time with anything, if you don't supervise. r slash credit. Mogdan Counted says. People who took a bite out of an Earth footballer's kids, why? What were you thinking? I did this for them says. My goals are beyond your understanding. Kerry underscore Chan says. I wanted to see how it felt on my teeth. The Tick Dweller says. No thoughts, just desires. Joden Cannell says. Colorful plus squishy equals yummy. Instant underscore ramen underscore chef says. I hope you understand just how funny and on point this question is. Space Ad Invader says. Cause it's nerf or nothing. Jen Fallis says. Stimming. Felt good against my gums. Rabbit Beaver Lake says. To scare the wee ones. Artistic Preference 86 says. Not much. That hasn't seemed to change in adulthood. Nefariousness Hot 6066 says. You guys were biting it? I always thought that tear came from a dog bite, or getting stuck somewhere, and then yanked out, or two people pulling at it at the same time. Bibeji Biz says. You got her. Twister1522 says. Needed to know how hard I had to bite before it broke. Aegis2009 says. MMMM squishy. Chip93731 says. Not an earth ball, but who remembers Vortex those foam throwing balls with aerodynamic fins that had whistles on the side and made a noise as you threw them? I caught one once and it took a bite out of me. The plastic whistle cut a bit of skin off my hand. Why am I here again 2019 says. Felt like a Twinkie. Specialist ad 6957 says. What does it taste like? Munchy. Tastes terrible. More munchy. Emotional underscore draft underscore 1457 says. Me licky squishy foam. Prize storage 5575 says. Dominance. Luck off Amish says. I like the texture. Lily does art stuff says. I like the sensation of chewing foamy things. Heck. I once bought one of those foam squishy toys, just so I could bite it. It's fun. Disposable Male 76 says. It was ripped already, and we were gonna throw it away. Snotic says. We has it's a ball, no nerf. Edward 4 gg says. They're all dead, in jail, or the president of the US now. The Extra Mayo says. Me want bite. Me want soft nerf ball delight. Competitive underscore casual 64 says. Ikmon, it was asking for it. R slash as credit. Serious medicine 4111 says. What's the most expensive mistake you've ever made? Phone 33R Enigma says. In 2003 I bought a new used car for $7,000. Three days later I was giving my cousin a ride into a larger town for her job. Figured I'd go buy some stuff for my car and install it all at a friend's house and then pick her up from work. Bought a CD player, speakers with a subwoofer, matching seat covers, floor mats, steering wheel gripper, some hobby related decals, just making the car mine. Went to pick up my cousin from work. It's raining now, driving home, showing off my radio and speakers. Look for a specific song on a CD, don't see that and sub in front of me is stopped in my lane with no turn signal on. Hit said sub. Total car, and everything else I had just splurged on. If you promise not to tell anyone else. Shamefully, I was looking for only god knows why by Kid Rock. Frickin' Kid Rock. 
JJ12622 says. Private college. If the OK says. I paid a 4k deposit for surgery, and it turned out the con artist scam people I paid the deposit, to had nothing at all to do with the surgery clinic. Pretty cool, felt great. I always thought I was pretty smart, and would spot something like that, but it was really seamless. I filed police reports, and did a thing with my bank and all that, but I was just, frick edition. Duffman13JWS says. Personally. Forgot to talk down the drain bolt on my transmission, after changing the fluid. It backed out, and dumped the fluid, I nuked two gears, before I realized that it happened. Dollar sign 2k down the drain. Indirectly? I didn't stay on top of my wifery, changing her oil. She went two years, and the engine seized. Dollar sign 8k up in flames. Roasted Bajil says. Beanie babies will pay for your kids college narrator, they did not. Skinny, Jean says. I worked in a number of biomedical labs and have, especially early in my career, definitely made a few expensive mistakes like leaving an antibody, backslash dollar sign 200, out too long and ruining it. Worst thing I ever did, was when I was mix up the labeling onto samples, and sent the wrong sample for an electron microscopy which ended up costing about $700 all told between the materials wasted to prepare the sample and the cost of the microscope and technician for an hour. I was a broke grad student so thankfully I didn't have to pay for the mistake, because I literally did not have enough money, to pay for it if I did, but I actually think that made me feel worse about it. Fair 8642 says. Opening an account to trade stocks. Lost 100k. In Jerry says. I almost dropped a few 00 apostrophe kg on a machine worth 50k. Yesterday. Oops. That was my biggest almost freak, up at work. Freedom Fighter says. Car accident. Cloudy Water 1 says. Worked for a small sign company and I ran the graphics department. I ruined 50k dollars of neon for a mall food court, by confusing radius w slash diameter. Kept my job somehow, but in my defense shouldn't have had a junior in HS running the entire art department solo. Jerk Sir Clutton says. Children. Well, the first one anyway. Was not planning on it when it happened. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't change any of it. But those little, frick, are expensive. It only gets worse as they get older. R slash credit. Whiskey underscore pusser says. Putting aside obvious things like cars and smartphones, what's an ordinary object from our modern lives that would freak out a person from the 1600s? Thesis Synthropist says. An aluminum rod. Light yet durable. It must be the mythical metal mithril. Phrygian says. The drastic changes to shoes over the years. They would be comfortable enough with them to recognize them and their purpose, but the flexibility and comfort of modern shoes as well as the availability of a variety of types to the common people, sold in general stores would probably be mind-blowing. They might not freak out, but it would be a shock emo. Like Sto Thinkalad says. Fleshlight. Comic Sulo says. Transparent plastic film. 811545 B2-4FF7-4041 says. A pocket calculator. A pre-packaged load of bread. A refrigerator. Although invented in 1596, I think a regular flushable toilet and the attached drainage would freak them out. Fresh running water coming out of a tap that's drinkable. A freaking light bulb. Whiskey underscore pusser says. I thought of this question, after seeing a can of hairspray. Feel like they would freak the absolute shit out a 17th century peasant. Brentsper says. A zipper, would freak them out, fastening things was very difficult in the 1600s. Snoo 70640 says. 
instant hot slash running water for easily accessible daily showers. These people boiled water and then took baths once a month and all shared the same bath water lol. Dotha Pingu says. Anything made in a factory like a towel or a lamp. Tall Enough Jones says. Alexa, turn on the lights. Just the electric lights themselves would freak them out to some degree, but they would assume that Alexa was some invisible demon created by Satan that you sold your soul to, which is pretty accurate, now that I think about it. Lestaldia481 says. Abigus, Felig mod out tomato. Take a bite out of it and watch their heads explode when you don't die of nightshade poisoning. Anachol says. Airhorn, noise freaks out the 21st century also. Colored felt tip pens for intrigue. Hoasta says. Big cigarette lighter, flame. From your hand. 547217 says. A kid's talking doll. Cute bald mouse says. Biggest one would be a flamethrower. People would think you were a fire god or a dragon. AVG Progman says. A witch tumbler account. Undulating Pasta says. Spices. Accomplished at 9617 says. You're a three sounding rods from our BDSM friends. That's all for this video. Was it good? I know not for I'm a robot. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. This video is the product of an automated process.